writing an essay, especially given my background as an engineer, is something that's always been pretty hard to do. And what you'll find as you move forward in college and in your career and in life, being able to communicate effectively with people is a skill that takes a lot of practice to do. And when I was in high school, I was very bad in my English classes. I never really read the books. I wrote canned essays. And by canned, I mean very formulaic and the very boring, you know, you have your thesis statement, you have your three paragraphs with the supporting evidence and the analysis of the evidence and your conclusion. And that really took the life out of writing to me. And it really took the just the soul out of who I was when I wanted to sit down and write something or convey some message to somebody. And I will make the argument that that, is, that essentially backfires when you are applying to college and high school. And the reason for that is when I was at UC Berkeley, I, I didn't get in out of high school. I had to uh, take a step back. I went to my junior college and junior college was not a step back. Junior college was a great thing that happened to me. Um, but I had to go through junior college and then transfer into UC Berkeley in order to get my bachelor's from that school. And along the way, um, you know, when I finally did get into UC Berkeley, I spoke directly with the counselors who were the people who read thousands of these personal statements every day and or every application cycle. And what I found was that you need to be able to stand out. And that personal statement is your opportunity to stand out. And if you approach it the way you have approached how you've been taught how to write based on what teachers have told you in high school, you're gonna have a really hard time standing out because you're gonna be another kid who is saying the same things that every other kid is saying on those applications, which is, I'm smart, I'm hardworking, I'll do well here. And every admission counselor has heard the same story so many times that it makes it forgettable. And the question is, how do you not be forgettable? How do you stand out but at the same time, how do you stand out in a good way? Because you can make yourself stand out by coming up with a sob story and then, you know, that's an attention getter sometimes. But if you don't spin it correctly and if you don't, um, you know, show that you're someone who's positive and someone who's motivated to get an education, you're really just wasting their time because, you know, they'll feel really bad about you, but that's not persuasive. And being persuasive is an art. It is dealing with people. It is like marketing. It is a sales pitch. And, you know, not everyone is a salesman or a woman. Um, you know, and this is what makes it so challenging for people, especially in the STEM fields like me, who, you know, I, I like doing math. I like computer programming. I like engineering. But ask me to give a sales pitch, especially when I was in high school, it's very hard to do. And the way I would recommend approaching it, if I could give myself advice back when I was in high school, is think about who you are as a person, list down on a piece of paper, not on your computer, but list down what makes you special, what drives you, what do you do for fun, what do you do outside of school when there's nothing else to do what you know how do you occupy all your free time you know not you're not always studying you're not always doing math you know do you play chess do you volunteer do you ride your bike do you garden do you do yard work do you you know go to a hospital just to talk with people there's you know i guarantee you are doing stuff outside of school and you just need to think and reflect and take a step back and ask yourself, why do I do these things? And your personal statement should be a reflection on yourself. And if you start from that, if you start from, you know, who you are, when you are applying to a particular program, 
you should start to come through a lot more better, a lot, yeah, a lot better, um, because you're going to be speaking from your heart, and your personal statement will be personal. It's not going to be a canned essay of, you know, I will succeed because I am smart, hardworking, and determined. I am smart because dot dot dot. I am determined because dot. You know, we've all heard that so many damn times. It's not memorable. You're, we're just going to forget it. So, your personal statement especially when you're in high school and you're applying to college, this is the first sales pitch I think a lot of people will ever give in their lives. And that's the reason why they usually suck. <laughs> I know mine sucked. I got rejected. Um, and so the big thing to do is to try to take my advice. And I'm not saying I'm right. You know, if you can have other people who can uh, go out of their way to read it and really think about whether or not it is persuasive because being persuasive is hard and before you even write down anything about yourself for your personal statement the one thing you should keep in the back of your mind is why am i writing this you're writing this because you want to sell the, the admissions committee on the idea that you will succeed in their program this is not just college applications anymore. This is a life. This is what it's like when you apply for jobs. This is the reason why it's so important that you practice and keep practicing and you take this seriously because it is hard and you're going to go through so many drafts and you're going to spend so many hours just with writer's block staring out a window like I am right now, just wondering, you know, what what am I supposed to do here? I don't even know what I should be doing. And then it'll get scary and then you'll start feeling really worried. And when you get to those points, it's important to just take a step back and go do something you enjoy doing. But, you know, just know that it's going to be in the back of your mind and you're going to keep thinking about it. And what I love to have with me is just a pen and paper and write down thoughts that come into my mind as I'm thinking about, you know, when I was applying to UC Berkeley and I said I wanted to be a chemical engineer. I just kept thinking up reasons about why chemical engineering resonated with what I wanted to do in my life afterwards and what I had done up to that point. And um, I will say this also, a very good book to read if you're into reading, which I wasn't and I wish I was more into reading when I was applying to colleges, is called how to win friends and influence people. And the author's last name is Carnegie, I believe. And he talks about how to give a good sales pitch to people because at the high level, your personal statement is a sales pitch. And when you are talking to someone, when you're trying to sell something to someone, you're trying to sell yourself to a college right now, what you're trying to do you're persuading them. And if you start your essay talking about why you want something and why you are special and why you are important, you're already off to a bad start because that's not a good sales pitch. A good sales pitch will make whoever is reading your essay feel important first. And you will acknowledge what matters to that person first. When you hear a good salesman give a pitch they never start talking about why they need the money from you <laughs> they talk about why they talk about a problem you probably currently have and they talk about how their product will solve this problem that you currently have and you know the important thing to note here is that uh this is all very relevant and um, giving good sales pitches will not come easy and it will take you many years just to get to the point where people start to listen to you. And it's not until even later in college that you are able to, you know, start getting a real taste for what it's like when you're applying for jobs. Because if, if you think this is the last sales pitch you're ever going to give when you're applying to college, you're wrong. It's going to get, you know, the stakes are going to be higher later on. Uh, 
you know, you're going to be fighting for a job, you're going to be competing with people, and it's exciting. I find it exciting. I know a lot of people probably don't, but to me, competing is really awesome because it bring, I, I feel like it brings out the best in people usually, and that is the case only when you approach it correctly, only when you approach it with the correct mindset, knowing that you very well may fail and you very well may not be the best, but that doesn't mean you're not going to still do your best to make the most that can happen. You know, you don't need to finish first and you don't need to get accepted by a school to uh, get stuff out of life and be happy. Like, this is all just a process. And so when you begin to freak out, just take a step back and know that just like the jobs, and I know this probably sounds a lot like my last video, but just like jobs, your school and your education, you know, your formal education is something that it is important, but don't put too much emphasis on it because you'll freak yourself out, you'll come off as desperate, and people won't take you seriously if you sound desperate. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to stop this video here, but I hope uh, some of the things I've talked about today are useful to people who are now sitting down to write those statements because I know how hard it can be, and I really hope you can take something away, like before you even start typing on a computer, take out a piece of paper and just jot down bullet points of who you are. That is helping me a lot right now because I have to write a lot of statements. And think about what are your selling points as a human being? What do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the classroom that would make you attractive to a school? And start your sales pitch talking about why, you know, the school needs people who can do this and then tell them how you are this kind of person. And it will make you stand out from everyone else who's going to be following the generic template of I'm smart, I'm hardworking, I'm determined. And if you have to explicitly state these things, that's also not good because you should be able to show from your life experiences and from your analysis of or your reflections of yourself that you have these qualities. And um, it is very tough. I'm not going to lie. Writing personal statements is tough. And I know people say how easy it is and how there's a magic formula for it. No. I've learned for myself that you just need to do it and you need to keep doing it and you need to fail and you need to keep doing it and eventually you will get there. You just need to keep believing in yourself and you need to take people's advice and when you get people's advice, be selective in who you take advice from. Uh, your parents sometimes are good, sometimes they're not. Uh, I would say probably admissions counselors are probably the best people you can talk to because they're the people who actually look at these for a living and live and read these things. So just sit down and talk with your admissions counselor. It's going to hurt because they're probably going to tell you that your essay is garbage. They usually always do. And that's good because you're there because you want to get feedback and you want to learn how to make your essay better. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching.